It's Australia versus New Zealand in the last round of the rugby championship. Can the Wallaby surprise? Here's my prediction. Welcome back to Skinny Brew Rugby, guys. So it's the last round of ru the rugby championship, and it is the Bledis Low Cup, or as we call it in South Africa, the Bloody Slow Cup. Uh, hopefully not this weekend because New Zealand need that bonus point so I expect them to run a little bit rampant and try and get tries in this one um, so yeah I think they could score a couple of tries hopefully they don't get a bonus point as a South African we hope that um, or if they do win uh, the South Africans will hope they don't win by more than 14 points that would also help the South African case um, if that happens, South Africa just needs to win the game um, by one point and they'll have the, have the uh, championship trophy in the bag. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you like the channel guys and if you want to see more content. Here is the game. So the recent record for the two teams, Australia, they've lost a game and won a game and then New Zealand, they obviously won that game and then drew last time out against um, South Africa. The last 10 games the two teams have played, New Zealand have won 9. In those 10 games, Australia have won the one in 2015 at home. So yes, they can do it at home, but there's not, not much to suggest that they could do it this time out. Um, but they have made some big changes. One of those changes coming in the front row, Alan Alalatoa comes in. He's an in-form prop um, from the Brumbies, I've liked him as a scrummager. In my Super Rugby videos, I had him in my dream teams every single week. So I think he'll do well. Along with Tolu Latu from the Waratahs. I think he's a better hooker than for Lau Fahinga. Um, you just lose a bit of edge at the malls. Because for Lau Fahinga is just excellent at the malls. And the other prop, Scott Sio. They're going up against a not all Crusaders front row like always. We have Franks and Moody, but in the hookers, Dane Coles comes into the mix. Um, from him, we can expect some runs out wide on the wings. He likes coming into that channel and he is quite quick as well. So you can expect that from him. Going on with some Crusaders players, um, Scott Barrett is back from injury and he replaces Brody Ritaliku. Uh, dislocated his shoulder against South Africa um, to get back into the squad immediately. He uh, joins Whitelock in the locking ranks. Um, it's just another great locking pair for New Zealand. The lineouts will be something to watch because they are going up against Rodder and Arnold of Australia. They are also very good players. Uh, they are some of those tackling busting players in that team along with some of the back rowers of the Wallabies. In the loose forwards for New Zealand, Adi Savaya goes to number 6 this week. Last time he was number 8 if I remember correctly. Sam Kane at number 7 and then the captain Kieran Reid at number 8. What a loose trio. Then the loose trio for Australia, Salakaya Lotto. He's another line-out line option for Australia. So then they also have Hooper and Nicerani. This loose trio, they haven't put any foot wrong in this competition so far. So they've been doing well. Then Nick White in at scrum off again. Him and Guinea switch out once again. I think the team did a little bit better with Guinea at number 10 though. Um, with White, you can expect more kicks from him. So yeah, that's not ideal, but that's a game that they probably want to play against New Zealand. You're going to have to kick into space though, because if that back three gets the ball, they are away and they're going to score some tries. That duo is up against Aaron Smith and Mahunga. Aaron Smith, he's in for Paranara, and then uh, Hansen has decided to continue with Mahunga at 10 and Barrett, uh, Bowden Barrett at number 15. Look, there was some good signs in the game against the Springboks, but there was also some bad signs. Uh, out of the two players, Bowden Barrett had the far better game. Uh, Mahunga had some bad kicks on the field. Uh, but then again, Bowden Barrett missed a lot of his goal kicking. So I would go from the start and kick, uh, let Mahunga kick at goal. That's just a better option. He's just a much safer kicker. 
but this is still a work in progress i think it can be very dangerous because like i said it's two very influential playmakers that you can have on both sides of your ruck or both sides of your scrum so it could work really well especially with that speed of Bowden barrett coming from deep the number 10 for the wallabies they continue with lialifano i think the team looked um, looked good last time out with him. It's two former Brumby combo that's linking up the 9-10 combo. White and Lealifano, they used to play together at the Brumby, so that's good as well. They know each other pretty well. The two centers for the Wallabies, Karevi, he's still in great form. He's been in great form all year long, so that's good for them to continue with him. I think he's going to stand out in this week's game again. He's the only big carrier in that back line for them, so they really need him. Then, somewhat of a surprise selection, not completely if you've been reading a lot of articles on it. Uh, I do, I need to, I need to do YouTube videos, obviously, so I need to read a lot of articles. Um, James O'Connor, he's in at number 13. Kuridrani didn't do anything wrong for me, so it's sad to see him out, but it's good to see James O'Connor get a chance at number 13. With him, you get some subtle touches, some steps, some kicks, instead of just that brute force that you have with Kuridrani. So maybe they would look to find a little smaller gaps against the New Zealanders with that. But O'Connor will have to stand his ground against Goodyear because he's going to get some big runs his way. As I mentioned, Goodyear, the inside center that teams up with Goodyear is Anton Leonard Brown. This combo, I think. I, I, it's my favorite one for New Zealand. It's two great New Zealand youngsters, not that young anymore, but pretty young. And I expect some big tackles from them. On the other hand, on defense, they are pretty solid. The wingers, Rico Ayoani and Ben Smith, they will want to do a bit better than they did against South Africa. They are going up against Koryabeti, Hodge and Beal at fullback. He was exciting. He just brings a different element to that back line. So the Wallabies having O'Connor and Beal and Lialifano in that back line, they have actually three playmakers versus the two playmakers of the All Blacks. So it might be quite interesting. But to me, it, while the Wallabies have a good side, the All Black side is better. History doesn't suggest that the Wallabies will do anything in this game. New Zealand, they need a bonus point in this game and that combo of Mahunga and Barrett will do that a lot of good. Uh, especially if they go with Mahunga for kicking from the start because we always know Barrett is going to miss some silly kicks. For the wingers, Barrett and Mahunga, they're going to try and switch, uh, swing that ball out wide as soon as possible for the wingers to get into the game. But they are very dangerous. And then remember guys like Scott Barrett and Dane Coles up front, they are also dangerous and can score tries. So for me, the All Blacks have a bit more of a punch, so I think they could win by 12. Let me know of that prediction, guys. Let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know of your thoughts of the team as well. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of my content. And then remember to check out some of my other videos. Then I'll see you for the next video. Cheers.